We're also staying on top of a murder case in Massachusetts where the husband of a missing mother of three is now charged in her death. Brian Walsh was arrested January 8th, a few days after his wife, Anna, was reported missing. He is currently being held without bail until his next status hearing, which is scheduled for February 9th. Joining me this morning to talk about both of these cases, criminal defense attorney and legal analyst, Jonna Spilbor. Thank you for being with us. Let's start in Massachusetts. That news breaking yesterday and in great detail, the district attorney revealing the evidence they had from a timeline of internet searches, blood in the house, blood on a hatchet, video of Brian dumping large trash bags, item of Anna's, items of Anna's in the garbage, DNA. Is this game over for Brian Walsh, legally speaking? Well, things got a whole lot worse for Brian Walsh yesterday. I'm now referring to this case as guilt by Google because the search result and his searches in the time that we know Anna went missing is very, very revealing. I mean, crazy things like how to uh, dispose of a dead body if you really need to. I don't know why he needed to add that uh, you know, to the end of his sentence, but this is very revealing. Now, here's the thing. We still don't have a body. Prosecutors don't have a body. And without a body, it's near impossible to prove cause and manner of death. You can still prosecute, and they in fully intend to prosecute, because this Google search is going to be one of many dots that a jury will eventually have to connect. When you combine the blood evidence, when you combine the Google search, when you combine the lies, uh, it may not be that difficult for the prosecutors to get their conviction, right. even without a body. So defense attorneys uh, don't say so, right? They say that they don't think prosecutors have a strong case, accusing prosecutors of leaking information and evidence to the media ahead of the public hearing yesterday. I want to read part of what they said. Uh, this is the defense attorneys for Brian Walsh. Easy to charge a crime and even easier to say a person committed that crime. Much more difficult thing to prove it, which we will see if the prosecution can do. So the prosecutors know this, that without a body, it's going to be harder. So how do they strategize? And what is the defense thinking right now? Oh, boy, we've got our work cut out for us, but here's how we're going to tackle it. Yeah, I think both sides know they have their work cut out for them. And I will say, here's a caveat, and I don't know if many people will, re will remember this case. 2003, Robert Durst, who's now dead, he was charged with multiple murders over the car course of his life. He was acquitted in the murder of his neighbor, Morris Black, after he shot him in the face, chopped him up in suitcase-sized pieces, and threw his body in the Galveston Bay. He said it was self-defense, and the jury believed him. Now, I, I don't know if, if this defendant, Brian Walsh, is going to want to take a page out of that playbook, but self-defense certainly isn't off the table, especially when you consider that the blood evidence that was found is both Anna's and Brian's. Is he going to claim there was a fight? Is he going to claim that this was an accident? What is he going to claim? It's not going to be easy for either side, but we still have a lot of unanswered questions in getting from point A to point B, point B being a conviction. Yeah, no, I'm glad you brought up Durst because I think a lot of people forgot about that, and that was a kind of oh my gosh moment. Um, a murder one or murder two charge, prosecutors will be deciding that, a possible plea. You think that's on the table? Pleas are usually always on the table. This case is so strange, though, because don't forget, Brian Walsh is in custody because he's violated the terms of his pre-sentence release on a, on a totally unrelated case. He's on $500,000 bail on the original charge, which was a small charge of impeding an investigation. Um, you know, we've got three little kids hanging in the bounce, not that he'll ever be able to father them again. I wouldn't say no to a plea deal. Probably a little too early to tell. Maybe. If Brian Walsh wants to start talking and tell prosecutors where the body is, that would be the biggest thing he could do in an effort to get a plea deal, in my opinion. All right, John, let's talk about Idaho, because we now know some of the items that were taken out of Brian Koberger's apartment. A black glove, hair strands, dark red spot, pieces of a pillow or pillowcase, mattresses. To you, what's the most important item on this list? You know, I'm not overly excited about this list just yet. I mean, this is, they have to collect evidence. We knew the investigators were going to collect evidence, but collecting and then connecting those pieces of evidence to the crime is a whole different ballgame, and we're not there yet. So, you know, could the spots, the cuts of the pillow be blood from, you know, he cut himself shaving and went to sleep? Yes. Could the dog hair be somebody else's dog? Yes. 
Could the other hair belong to not a victim in this case? Of course. Those are the questions that we really need answer be answered before we uh, really get too excited about the items in this search warrant. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.